Great. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate you uh, allowing us to be here, and I appreciate y'all putting us first on the agenda. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I think everything gets better from here. It's <laughs> <Now laughs> got to go up from here. So, uh, in front of you, um, I don't know if we've got a complete set of financial statements, but we got two letters. One, um, one says to the Board of Commissioners, and one says Honorable Chairman and Distinguished Members of the Commission. The, the latter one, the Honorable Chairman uh, letter, is what we're going to go over first. Um, this is a summary of the financial statements for the year ending June 30th, uh, 2016. So that's the year under audit. Um, and this year I uh, got a little smarter on it. Put page numbers on the, the actual attachments so maybe everybody's on the same page and I refer to them in, in the letter. So maybe that'll help us kind of stay focused on where we're at. Um, just a little, you know, 30,000 foot above the total uh, government revenue for all funds, excluding the internal service funds, agency funds, was 88 million, seven, seven million. So you can see that's a pretty fair size budget right there. Um, so getting a little deeper down, the, the first fund, which is on page three, is your general um, general fund. The general fund ended with a budgetary income of two hundred fifty thousand dollars for the year. Two hundred fifty thousand dollars. The total um, income for the fund was fifty million one hundred forty thousand. The total expenditures were fifty million and seventy six thousand dollars. So um, the revenues were under budget by two hundred thirty three thousand dollars for the year. Expenditures were under budget by four hundred seventy-five thousand dollars for the year. The taxes decreased by two hundred and eighty-five thousand from the previous year and were nine hundred and seventy-six thousand below the budget. So um, that kind of gives you an idea of where we're at on the budget. Um, anybody got any questions on page three on the general fund? Well, we're on the same page. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Now, 
TAZT tax, it dropped 
61,000 compared to 638,000 previously. Uh, net position was 2 million and 10,000 compared to 949,000 previous year. Um, majority of the revenue drop and expenses drop was in the health insurance previous year. Um, I think that, that number had a decrease of 1,467,000. Percentage paid by the employees, reduction in coverage, etc. But we determined that we needed to stay pat for the, for this year, and we'll continue to look at that. And um, both Stephanie and Paige work on that committee as, uh, as well. And uh, I think we will be. It's going to be an ongoing problem with healthcare, just like everybody else. But we just have to keep a very close watch on that and see uh, what we might do. I, one of the things I didn't want to do was last year we had an increase in benefit or in payment to the employees and then turn around and increase the cost of premiums to them and they actually wind up taking a deduction of a loss. So we, we tried to avoid that. Either you have any. I was just going to say that one of the things that we're really looking at is, you know, what the front end cost to the employee is, which is looking really, really good, especially in the pharmacy area. That's one of the, the areas that we have gone up this past year. But whenever you have these $4 programs, it's only costing the, the employee $4, but the cost of our plan for that drug on the back end is significantly higher than if the employee had paid, say, $6 just depending on where they go. So, Mr. Pritchard contracted, um, commissioners have heard the study, study and pressed to work with a vendor that is looking at all of those absolute costs. Then what we're moving to next is actual cost of procedure in an effort to really make our employees better shoppers, better consumers when it comes to making those decisions and where they go for that care. You know, if, if there are two places in town that have the same procedure done, and one place is going to cost $1,000 and then somewhere else is going to cost $1,800 then you know the employees know what their percentage of 
that's going to be in the choose where to go for that. So that's kind of the next step in giving us some better options and increasing their awareness of how it actually works. I was just wondering, Joe, I just, you know, if, if the Affordable Care Act impacted in any type of way or if it changes, if it, if it, if it changes this year or next year, would that limit? Well, it depending change. on what the changes look like, I mean, it could have some impact to us. Um, but at this point, you know, we, we still don't know what that's going to look like. I don't think anybody in Washington knows what it's actually going to look like. What, what kind of medical would be? Usually it's premature babies that can cost that much. Um, we've had some twins that have been in out-of-town NICUs for months. Um, that's usually where we see it. And then we've had um, a few cancer cases, and some of them over time can be significant. And I'm sure most of the time it's not one particular case. It's just the way it lands. You may have two or three heart surgeries, serious cancer issues, Preacher babies, whatever the issues may be, that on an aggregate basis, then it's going to add up pretty quick. Over the 17 years that I've been here, I think we usually keep anywhere from four to seven cases that are a significant amount of spending. I, I, I can imagine the level of employees in the aggregate. It's like a small business, it seems like you've always got something. And, and previously, we were covering uh, spouses. We, we will cover them now if they have proof that they're not mm -hmm. have coverage. But, um, we had a number of uh, spouses that incurred a significant amount of Well, let me, let me, and I don't mean to interrupt your train of thought, it's just something I, I read. All of this and this discussion kind of plays into really what our mission statement is. And I want to, you'll find the mission statement in your binders. But just to clarify that and to repeat the mission statement, the mission statement says to provide an efficient, effective, and responsive local government to all citizens of Lowndes County while maintaining the financial strength to meet any contingents. That's about as clear as it can get and works very, very well. But those are the discussions that we're having right here now talking about health care. And that's, Mr. Pritchard and I, we talk about it a good bit. I mean, he bounces it off, me, off me a lot about the health care issue. It is a moving target and it's changing. And we know that with the new administration in Washington, it could change again. And so every time that there's a change on that end, and then if there's a change in, in the health needs of the employees of Lowndes County, that always affects this, but they're always constantly addressing that, focusing on that, and then trying to be ahead of the curve, you might say, as much as they possibly can. So again, while maintaining the financial strength to meet any contingency, and that's the whole purpose of what we do from a financial standpoint. From my understanding. It's a very delicate balancing act between uh, fair and equitable treatment to the employee and fair and charges to the taxpayers as it is related to this. So it's not always one or the other. It's just trying to find that balance as to what is I'm sorry. Mark, go ahead. Any other questions on page five? Additionally, a 
$11,985,000 was transferred to other municipalities. Uh, federal awards this year were $1,449,000. Um, the two major programs were Juvenile Accountability Block Grant and Community Development Block Grant. And with that, I'll uh, open it up for any other questions. I appreciate the feedback as we go through this, you know, and um, it's really, it's encouraging <coughs> that everybody takes the time to really look at these numbers and, and, uh, and try to understand them. Um, so, I appreciate that. I have a question. I'm just changing somewhat. I can't remember what we said. According to NACO, they had concerns about the interest rate on municipal bonds uh, and then being rejected. Uh, I guess uh, no penetration. How would it affect us?